futures point to a higher open as borrowing costs came down in the Italian and Spanish bond auctions, indicating Europe is taking some steps to get the debt crisis under control. In corporate news, Chevron will be in the spotlight after it guided down fourth quarter profit expectations with production falling short. Economic data on tap includes jobless claims, retail sales, and business inventories. I'm Jill Malandrino, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, everyone. I am Evan Lazarus with T3Live.com. And I'm Jill Melandrina with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. We're up about five handles going into the open. The European bond auction was better than expected, but what we're looking at today are the key identifiable trends that we've seen in the market overall, where we're back into a stock picking environment, which is exactly what Evan and I are looking for. We've seen a lot of movement on the overnight, and we've seen a lot of movement predicated on the opening print. Well, your point about overnight movement is highlighted really uh, here in the S&Ps. I'll bring them up for you so we can take a quick look. Uh, the S&Ps, since um, basically the middle of December, we've seen a nice little uptrend starting to develop. Uh, most of the gains are coming overnight, which is worrying those traders that are looking for that, that momentum trade, that big volume surge to come into the market. We're not seeing it. We haven't seen it. I don't anticipate that we're going to see it. Uh, barring any headline news or, or, or global macro that, that might jar this market. We have to respect the charts though, uh, and we are approaching the, the, the psychological 1300 level in the S&Ps, and even more so important than that, you have this downtrend line from our April, uh, our April highs, and I think this is really the area traders need to pay attention to. This is around 1305, 1310 uh, in the S&Ps, and this looks like it's going to be the natural magnet for where prices are heading. Opening up again this morning on uh, you know, some, some overnight, uh, like you said, the bond auction. So uh, traders here, we have to respect the fact that, that, that there's buyers here. Prices are going higher, uh, but we're not seeing that enthusiastic surge volume, that we like right. to see. Right. That, that's right. We have the really light volume. So on tap for today, we have jobless claims, uh, commerce retail sales, and business inventories. And really only headlines that we're going to see because there's not much on tap for earnings. I mean, we have J.P. Morgan going into trade tomorrow, and it's really going to light up next week. Um, but we have uh, the ECB meeting today, so I'm sure we'll see some more headlines coming out of Europe. Moving on to the sector spotlight, we're going to look at the energy space, and this one's going to be on fire today. Chevron guiding down Q4 uh, production margins because again that nat gas story we haven't had the weather in the northeast to provide that catalyst and i think you're going to see more companies come out guiding with the same direction well that's right let's take a look here at chevron uh Hi. from a technical perspective Hendelman, and a chart CEO perspective of Live. um we we need to respect the fact that at 110 okay you can see over here major major resistance multiple touches of this area <clears throat> so it's, this news is very timely in the sense that it's happening at a major area of resistance. I do expect to see some downside pressure here. And I think the real story here is in natural gas. Uh, we're going to bring up the UNG. <clears throat> Decimated, uh, you know, 50% loss, 50% haircut since um, basically June or mid of last year. <clears throat> Opening up below 6 this morning. Um, this trade is getting, like I said, a little long in the tooth. And I do expect a bounce, a short-term bounce. So active traders... You might want to start to watch the UNG and natural gas for that snapback type of trade. I just want to take a look at Oxy. This is a name where, you know, it looked like it was getting, it was touching a piece of resistance, kept moving up, moving up, moving up. And a lot of people were looking at Chevron as a potential value play relative to Oxy. But clearly the story fundamentally has changed. Well, let's take a look here at Oxy. Um, this sector, very similar looking. A lot of these charts look identical. Into an area of resistance, flirting with breaking higher. Bullish in, bullish in nature here, but if this can, you know, if we draw down pretty hard here, it's going to change the complexion of all these stocks. So I think th this is a sector we need to keep an eye on in the short term. So if I had to pick, you know, any spot within the group, I'd probably look at your ExxonMobil, your ConocoPhillips. These are more diversified, these companies, where, you know, they do have the refining margin pressure, but there are other areas. These are huge cash cow companies, almost like the Microsofts of the oil space. And yes, you know, the underlying is volatile. You know, there's always news coming out of Iran, whether or not there's going to be um, a shutdown of the streets. There's potential strikes going on in Nigeria. But... You know, the, the oil could also be catching a bid because uh, economic data is slowly improving. So that's two different stories of the tape. And if I had to pick my spots, I'd probably look at the ExxonMobil, ConocoPhillips of the world. Completely agree. Uh, from a technical perspective, if we look at Exxon, much stronger in nature, flirting with making, you know, new highs up here. Uh, in the short term, you know, nice basing action here has been nothing but a buy on dips. Uh, and I suspect if we get a dip here, there's going to be a lot of dip, you know, dip buyers. That's really where the money's been made. Let's take a look at short-term trend line here just for 
uh, where it might be a good area to look to be a buyer. Well, if we can pull back to the $80 mark into this prior basing area, probably going to be an opportunity for, for those that are looking for pullbacks here. And I do like right. these plays, Exxon, Exxon and Conoco, more so than the others. Right. And if these companies finally put that cash to work and they do something with a share buyback or take that dividend up, these are absolutely going to shoot through the roof. We're going to jump into a quick commercial. And when we come back, we go into the trenches. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the morning call. Speaking of stock picking, we're going to jump into the trenches in the retail space. Retail sales holiday season wasn't quite as strong as people expected, especially on the margin end because it was a very promotional environment in, uh, for, in the effort to get inventory out the door. So this is where it's kind of cool for Evan and I because this is where you go stock picking. You have your performance-based names that did really well. You have your luxury names that didn't do too well because they just did not live up to analyst expectations and the charts completely confirmed that for us. Let's kick it off with Macy's in the department store space. Interesting here that you know you have the haves and you have the have-nots in the same sector. Macy's a have, big department store, has been nothing but a performer all year, consistently making higher highs and higher lows. It's so what we like to see, nice steady uptrend. Uh, sitting here at new highs yesterday, uh, momentum sort of dying here. A little, uh, you know, the candlesticks here from a, from a charting perspective getting smaller, ranges getting tighter. Could be ripe for a pullback. I'd look to be a buyer of Macy's on a pullback, possibly into the you know, lower 30s. 31, 32 area for a trade. Moving along to Lulu, <laughs> gotta love those yoga pants and clearly everyone else does too. It's almost like Starbucks at $5 coffee. People are still buying, they just increased their Q4 guidance. Well, my wife's been killing me because I, I refuse to buy the stock. It's been nothing but an earner, buying every pullback. So my apologies go out to my wife. It's been At a, least you're a, supporting a, the bottom it's line. It's been an ongoing fight and I've been wrong every single time. Um, Lulu upping their guidance the other day, we can see on the chart, breaking away here. Uh, we saw earnings not too long ago down here around f the low 40s, now up here around 60 bucks, approaching new highs. Now, I would not be a buyer here. You don't want to chase this you know, upside breakaway. You want to let this base, build a base, possibly pull back, better buy in the mid 50s. So moving along to Nike, if you talk about Nike, you also have to look at UA. These performance-based products, these are the ones that caught the bid through the holiday season. They clearly outperformed. This is one of the spots that we picked. Is there still more room to go, or do we look to pull back a bit? Well, like most of these stocks, you don't want to buy new highs. Uh, buying new highs is a recipe for disaster. I don't care who you are. Um, if you are an active particip participant in the market with shorter-term time frames, uh, you don't want to buy new highs. You do want to buy pullbacks. So, you know, Nike here strong, nothing else to say, sitting at highs, definitely going to have some trouble getting through this upper band of resistance. You can see, you know, poking its head here, but not really breaking through. I'd look to be a buyer, Nike, if you can, somewhere in the mid to lower 90s. Moving along to the luxury names, Tiffany and Coach. Look, some guidance cuts there, too. They did not perform as well as expected. Um, you know, maybe U.S. tourism wasn't quite as strong. Maybe the European uh, effects are really starting to hit the stocks, but this was another group where you could pick them and see that they just did not um, outperform like some of the other names did. Well, maybe Tiffany's goes in line with uh, what's expected with Wall Street bonuses this year. So we have the half knots, and this is a stock breaking down on a big gap down a few days ago. Uh, probably just best left as an avoid. Um, just stay away from it at this point. There's really no reason to be here. There's better names that we can go to uh, that have you know better opportunity. You don't want to buy. You know you don't want to be picking bottoms. This is not a market to pick bottoms. This is a market to play the ones where money flow is. Stay away from right. the ones that where money flow is not. Even if you take a look at Coach, I'm pretty sure that the chart looks similar. Again, they were a bit of really nice October, November, well, a little bit different. October, November, and then as consensus was bringing their estimates down, as the holiday season wasn't playing out quite as well, you kind of see the same pattern fundamentally and also from the chart perspective. Well, with Coach, you know, it's interesting. From a short-term perspective, it could be an interesting trade right here in the low 60s where it's at right now. You know, if you really want it to be tight against that $60 level, uh, you might want to look to buy this pullback here. But that being said, there really hasn't been much opportunity in the stock. We look to the left here. We go back to October and, and even September. The stock hasn't really made much forward progress one way or the other in the last, you know, five, six months. So at this point, I'd say if, if it hasn't participated going into 
you know, in the fourth quarter of last year when you've seen a lot of opportunity in retail, mm -hmm. maybe it's best to just stay away. Moving along, let's go to quick hits for quick cash. We're going to kick it off with Visa. There's a bunch of analysts out there saying, hey, look, if you're going to get involved in the financial space, take a look at the credit cards. Loan growth is moving up a bit, and economic data at the end of the day is really improving from a domestic standpoint. Well, Visa's had a nice run. We can't deny the fact that the stock has, has already had a big move. We look at the August price down here around 75, now trading, you know, we saw uh, slightly over 100 a few days ago. It's actually dealt very well with the uh, big sell-off that we saw on MasterCard over the last week and a half. I would be very careful from a technical perspective if you are a chart, an avid chart follower. Be careful with this pattern. This looks like it could pull back to the low to mid 90s here into this rising trend line. Uh, just in touch t to talk about credit cards for a bit further, you can see that sell-off in MasterCard from 380 to 340 over the last you know, seven or eight sessions. There are sellers here. Uh, I know a lot of, tra a lot of traders have tried, have tried to buy this dip already and have been punished for doing so. So be very, very careful with this credit card sector right now. Moving along to IBM, we did really well with this play over the summer, Evan, you and I, when we did that with Options Profits, I think it was like August or September. Great move up into just about two weeks before the year ended, and you know, it's, there's pullback, so there's another opportunity for people to put new money to work. Well, just like in, in, in retail and tech land, it is a have and a have not situation. It is a stock picker's tape. You have to be very, very meticulous about the symbols you are buying right now. Uh, with IBM, you know, we've seen great performance out of this stock for, for fairly, you know, a long time at this point. There is a little bit of an ominous head and shoulders pattern forming here. You can see this rising trend line. You can see the, uh, the lower peaks on each side with the head. We've seen this pattern over and over and over again, you know, in various sectors at various times. And we know that what this can lead to is a pretty sharp sell-off. So I'm very, very careful about being long IBM here. It's starting to underperform. And if it really undercuts this trend line, you could see a trade back to the 160 mark. Um, and this is obviously a bellwether big cap tech mm -hmm. stock, something you have to take notice of. Moving along to Goldman Sachs, the financials, there's definitely one identifiable trend going into 2012. This group has done really well. It caught a nice bid. So the question is, are they being bid up going into JP Morgan uh, earnings, or is this really something that's substantial that's going to lend some true support to the market? Well, I guess time will tell. Right now, as a trader, you have to just respect that if you're going to trade these bank names, they are just trades. They're short-term cash flow type of trades. I wouldn't go, you know, making a stance and saying these are long-term investments right now, and this is the bottom, and this is the bottom, and this is the bottom. That trade's not going to make any money. It'll be the bottom when it is the bottom, right. and we don't need to figure that out the hard way. Let's respect the fact that, you know, every, every up move in Goldman Sachs, for that matter, has been short-lived. Every time we've seen a rally, just case in point here in mm -hmm. October, where the stock rallied from 85 to a buck 20 in you know two or three weeks, boom, sold right back down. Again, another short-term bounce to 105, sold right back down. So let's respect the fact that the stock has been nothing but short-term trades. And if you're going to trade it, you know use your tr you know use your charts wisely. I think Goldman can see back to the 105 pivot area, the prior high. If it can really, really you know get that momentum trade through there possibly something is changing but for right now it's a short-term trade and we like it back to this you know low 100 105 area let's take a look at potash t uh, ticker pot the ag group that's my pick for 2012 mosaic being my favorite name i think fundamentally and technically there's so much opportunity within this group and this name in particular well again this this goes to the theme that we'll talk about in just a few minutes this junk off the bottom mm -hmm. trade and and i use that phrase because you see this um, you know, we've seen this trade as a predominant theme since January 1st of this year over the last, you know, two and a half weeks. Uh, Potash is a name that was a one-time major high flyer. Mm -hmm. Just a ton of momentum, lots of eyeballs, lots of day traders, lots of activity. Uh, really, really been quieted over the last few, you know, two years really. You can see if we look at a, long, a longer term chart, you know, the 2008 sell-off, it came back, but never quite to the levels of, of you know, those, those, those peak highs that we saw in, in early 08. Um, and the stock for the better part of 2011 did not perform. Um, so, so, but for right now, the, the, the short-term trade is a trade through 44. We could look you know, at a move up to possibly the 49 area. Uh, I like that from a short-term trading perspective, so we'll keep right. an eye on Potash. Well, traders uh, looking at the space anyway, they're going to have their eyes on the tape because you have the USDA report that comes out today. And that's, you know, this one's been really talked up because I think they're expecting it to be better than what uh, they thought in terms of corn crops, for example. So these names could definitely catch a bit off of that. Let's round it out with MCP. These names that have that Chinese transparency exposure and have huge short interest have really been a big story as well. Well, that's the key. The key is the short interest here. That's really where the money flow has been. Stocks that have been you know, sold off for the entire year of 2011, left for dead, many of them. 
uh, hanging, hanging off a cliff. You know, this is where money flow has been, and the, sh the heavy short interest accelerates that because when new money gets put to work and you start to see these things start to hold in, then the shorts start to cover, and it's a snowball effect, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And MCP and these rare earth symbols are a prime example of that. We look at uh, RE, I think, is the best example. Uh, rare elements, stock that, you know, just a couple days back was at three, a move to seven and a half. That's a you know 150% move in, in in about five six trading sessions, um, and that's the kind of thing you'll see in this in this type of trade, especially with stocks that have the heavy mm -hmm. short interest that are just you know getting sold and sold and sold. When they do, when the shorts do start to cover, it is a nasty nasty quick momentum oriented trade, um, and, and you don't want to step in front of this. Right. So be very careful with a lot of these symbols that we've seen some nice moves. Now the key here will be. Do they build a nice high-level base? Will there be opportunity for us going forward, you know, in a week, two, three, three weeks from now? That'll be the key. Rounding off the morning call, let's take a look at that junk on the bottom. Let's take a look at the SPX and see exactly what you're talking about on the charts. Okay. Well, when we look at the SPX, when we look at the S&Ps, you know, you see a market that has, you know, just lingering higher slowly but steadily, and you have a market where, um, you're not really seeing new gains in like the IBMs and some of the big cap techs. You're seeing gains in some of these stocks that have been, like I said earlier, just left for dead. Mm -hmm. Bank of America, the best example. Bank of America, how quickly we forget, was at the, that, that key $5 level where it, was, it, would, it couldn't be owned by institutionals under, fi under, right. under five bucks. So now it's been, you know, it's been that $5 area was, was preserved and we're now trading close to seven bucks. Um, and it has been a very, very good short-term trade. I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't go so far as to say the bottom is in or this is a must-have and you need to chase price. Don't chase, this don't chase these types of trades. If they're going to go higher, they're going to set up, build nice bases, and they're going to give us opportunity to position ourselves right. going forward. At this point, the trade, from, from my opinion, is over. We could see a little more extension possibly to the 7.5 area, which is key resistance, and we'll watch that in the days ahead. But at this point, don't chase any of this Right, stuff. especially going into earnings. I mean, this is as volatile as we'll get all quarter. Um, so we have a lot we're looking at, not too much in terms of earnings or economic data today, but they're, you know, this market's really been predicated on headline risk. But the good thing is we're also going back into stock picking where you know, earnings is really going to kick off and we can use some of that volatility to pick our spots. Don't forget, each day at the end of the day, catch Scott, Evan, Mark recapping the charts for you on the Daily Recap.